All right. Hello, everybody. It's Andy. How's everything doing? How's our heads? How's our minds? Are we staying out of trouble? I hope so. Um, I want to start the show this week with a world premiere, a new single off our new record, which is funny because the song is called Wash, Rinse, Repeat, and the record is called Wash, Rinse, Repeat. Um, it's basically about a, about a, a song that is, uh, oh man, I can't talk today. I had a fucking rager for my birthday. Um, it's a song about just trying to figure out what you like to do every single day and try to do that every day. Wash, rinse, repeat. Um, we're getting, we're finally getting out of this COVID bubble and, uh, it's just important that we for, don't forget who we used to be. So ladies and gentlemen, Chris, play the, play the horns, baby. It's, it's a world premiere. You know what time it is. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy my new single with my band, Andy Frasco, the UN, Wash, Rinse, Repeat. you like this today because i you didn't even gig this weekend i <laughs> know i you're more hungover when you don't well, i guess that makes sense when you don't work and Maybe. we're back and andy we're back. frasco's world saving podcast i'm andy frasco how's your heads how's our minds are we staying out of the dark crevices that a hangover brings i don't um, i don't think so <laughs> i mean 
You aren't. I got Nick Gerlach, my co-host here. How we doing, buddy? I'm good. I had a great weekend. I worked my ass off. You did. You gigged hard. Rehearsals and gigs. Yeah, you did a lot. You I came to all of my gigs. I came to every single one of your gigs. And we didn't talk until after the third one. Yeah. So gassed. That's how we know we've said it. We, we, we put it all on the mics. We don't talk in public. We don't interact in public. No, no. Just publicly on a podcast. Form. I might give, throw a couple roasts in the, from across the green room, you know? Oh man, I I I went to like six concerts this weekend. I know, and uh, I drank all weekend, What'd and then do? I thought it was smart to go get a nitrous tank at Sunday night. That's pretty fun, though. It was it was pretty gas. No pun no, intended. Literally. <laughs> but I and I just watched Euphoria for five or six hours, and yeah. I had to wake up early to do a podcast. Is that interview. the teen sex drama that's on HBO right I now? I fucking love it. I haven't watched it. I am obsessed. But you know, with there's like a it. large group of people on Twitter that are mad at it. Why? Because they're Cause promoting like, drug use to kids. No, that and like there's these people that are saying it's like pedophile shit. Pedophile stuff. Because it's like high schoolers having sex. Yeah, it's pretty edgy. It. It's pretty edgy. But like, what isn't edgy in 2022? But they're not actually. The actors are like 25. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. They're not actually having sex either, guys. It's a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's or like, they're not doing heroin either. No, they're really doing heroin. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. No, they're getting vaccines. Oh. Oh, yeah. They just use that. <laughs> they just use the vet. They're like, hey, you're getting your vaccine today? Can you just come in and do it at the studio? We need you for a shot. <laughs> oh, Two man. Birds, baby. Right off the bat, we're talking about kids having sex and no, doing heroin. <laughs> well. It's like kids. Remember kids, the movie? Yeah, I love that movie, actually. That Dude, guy, it's edgier than kids. Is it? It's pretty I heavy. I actually disagree, but I haven't seen it. But remember, the, like, someone got AIDS in kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. From being R-worded. Yeah, I don't yeah. even want to say that word on the podcast. Yeah, don't even say it. Yeah. Um, How we doing, Nick? I'm good. It's my fucking birthday. It is your birthday this week. I, you're not, like, a big birthday guy, are you? I am. Sometimes I feel weird, like, asking people to buy tickets for to go to my birthday party. Well, but it's a show. Yeah. You know, I mean, they would go if it wasn't your birthday. True, true. Trying to... Uh, you don't want it to be all about you for once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're releasing we're releasing a new song on Friday. Hell yeah. Made a music video. Just a lot of things going on. Our new record comes out April 8th. Let's fucking go. I can finally announce it, baby. Oh, so we have a date. We have a date. April 8th. The album... a musician again. I am. I'm back. I'm back. Brian had to slap me into, into shape, and I'm officially a musician again. Tell me about the album. Oh, God. I don't even remember. We wrote it so long ago. <laughs> no, Can I, I ask you some stuff about it? Yeah, sure. How many songs are on it? Twelve. Oh, it's a real album. Real this is album. not an EP. It's called Wash, Rinse, Repeat. I like that about you. You're putting Not a lot of bands are putting out albums. It's all like singles these days. But you have enough clout that you can do that now. Yeah, and I just feel like I'm such a old school way of... I love the product of an album. You know, it's your, oh, yeah. your year of art. In one sitting. Especially for what you do. It's, like, it works for you more. Yeah, and it, it's so weird how bands aren't making records anymore because of ADD culture. Yeah, but I mean, it's, you know, it's not their fault, really. It's, no. It's who's consuming it. Yeah, and, and, like, you get more bang for your buck if you just keep releasing singles. So it's like, for me, it's like, I don't feel like I produced something, like a project for the whole year. Mm -hmm. If I just keep putting out singles and... Yeah, not put them in a collection, but I think singles especially make more sense if you're like a producer, right? Like electronic music producer, because uh -huh. you can be like, I do, because a lot of it's about genre with that, and they switch genres up a lot. So right, it's kind of weird to like listen to an album where it's like a hip hop tune and then a drum bass tune, and then a, you know what I mean. What, yeah. what they're doing is different, but for you, it's like you're writing songs with lyrics. I don't know, you have a theme. Yeah, plus you're like your mentality is always changing in your life. I uh -huh. feel like, and I feel like your albums kind of yeah, your albums are yeah, you have good lyrics. I have to hand it to you. I used to drink all week. Now I just smash them on, <laughs> on the weekends. I want to talk about your lyrics more. Yeah, talk uh, about you for once. It's your birthday. Wow, you want to talk about I me gas today? You up? All right, thirty-four. How do you gas up a thirty-four-year-old? You don't. You tell him he's good at writing lyrics, though. <laughs> I was going to bring you a present today, but what was it? It's not done yet. I'm going to bring it next week. What is it, like an arts and crafts present? Well, just. I'm not a very good gift giver, so we got to work on you it. You got me a gift? Let's get back to your lyrics, though. Here's why they're good. <laughs> All right. You don't like being complimented, do you? No. Yes, you do, you fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. <laughs> well, not that many people are writing good lyrics anymore. 
Well, I think people are afraid to talk about what they want, like what they're actually dealing with. It kind of p- plays into like stand up comedians for me, too. The best stand up comedians talk about them themselves. It's like, you know what I mean? And what you're doing is good because you're reflecting general things, but you're still writing about yourself, right? right? It's good. I'm sick of corny love songs, which is, you know, it is Valentine's Day right. or whatever, but. I always write songs about my friends' relationships. Yeah, what? Is that what all, all your songs are about your friends' relationships? When I'm, when I'm writing a love song, I'm oh, yeah. writing it about my friends' relationships. Like who? Um, I wrote a song about Sean's relationship with Toby. I like their relationship. Yeah, they got a good one. They're like of a fun marriage. Yeah, They're yeah. They're always having fun. And, you know, like, Toby keeps him on his toes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he didn't have any of that, he'd be... She's cool. You know? I like her. He'd be living in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. So shout out to Toby for keeping my boy Sean alive. Love it, Let's man. go. Side note, he murdered it this weekend in the Led Zeppelin thing. Yeah, you... Got, by the way... That was good, right? I loved it. Yeah. I was kind of worried about hearing horns with the uh, with Zeppelin, mm-hmm. but it was sick as fuck. I'll and clap Dave, it up for you. Dave picked some cool arrangements. I, I can't Dave, really take any credit for that. I know Dave and Sean and Todd Smalley. Todd Smalley is one of my favorite people ever. He's so he's got such swag. He's the bass player of JJ Gray. Yep. He well, to, he's like Allman Brothers family too. Yeah, he has some medallion, and they gave him like some medallion. And I love seeing Sean. You know. He, he loves that music so much. Yeah, it's fun to see him. No offense, it's like it's fun to see him get to play that. Kind of yeah, thing, you know what I mean. Yeah, totally. But with a band, not by himself. Yeah, he does it solo, but it's different when you got like a sick drummer. Yeah, Todd Smalley's such a badass bass player, man. Uh, he is. He has that thing. It's, here's how you can tell a good bass player. Okay, it's like you don't notice him, and yeah. then at the end of the gig, you're like, "Holy shit, there was this badass." You know what I mean? You yeah. Know, you don't notice him until the gig's over, and you're like, "Oh man, I didn't notice the bass one time." That means, right. That means he's just in there, like he's, he's fucking to, shredding it, just smiling. Yeah. God. Oh, you you be proud. I went on my first Bumble date. You did? Where'd you go? Um, we went to Tavernetta's. Oh, restaurant. And then she was. Oh, this deathly, was last night. This was last night. You wait, the, hold on. You went a date after going to that Scott thing? Yeah. Oh and I was just God. hammered, and like I had the con. Andy. I was so wasted by four o'clock because Scott's DJ show started at noon, so I was just pounding vodka sodas and dancing to, Whatever. you know. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come here. At the time, you're fucking 33 year old. Yeah, and I got all smiley. Yeah, that's how I first realized I was old. You're older than Jesus now. Yeah, I made it past Jesus. Let's go. Let's go. So tell me about this date. Get back to the date. Okay, I will. And then, but I realized I was old because there's a couple younger people there thinking like, oh, is a DJ is playing, and then it's just like all fucking just like 80s and 90s music. Still liked it though. They said it it was fine. But, like, I realized I was so old because, like, <laughs> she was like, what the fuck are you guys listening to? Oh, no, it's just Whitney Houston. Yeah, she's <laughs> the greatest pop singer of all time, you <laughs> fucking loser. You are wrong. We're not old. You're young. Let's go. God, are we becoming those old people who make fun no, of you? No, because, like, we knew who the Allen Brothers were when we were in high school and shit. Right. People should know about Whitney Houston. She's, like, an archetype of the culture. You know right, what true. Anyway. She probably, we'll see. I, <laughs> sound, sound, I'm a mess. You sound confident. I've had people like, um, you know, get on me for saying, "Get over it, Frasco." You always talk about never having a girlfriend. I'm like, I don't. People ask though. Yeah, they ask, and like, you know, it's like also like, maybe I shouldn't wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> At the same time, I have seen you go up to someone's and be like, "Andy Frasco never had a girlfriend." Nice to meet you. I said that? No. But, you know, I mean, you get right into it, people, though. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I overhear it. I overhear it, and I just keep going. I had a, I had a, a tiff with um, a friend in the Loha Beach crew, and she was saying, like, who? she thought I was full of shit. I'm not going to say it. Oh, I know who it is already. She thought I was full of shit. Like, the, he's, what? what is he hiding? Why does he always talk about his sex life? I'm like, because I'm like a recovering sex addict, and that's how you talk about it. That's, you should talk about that in recovery. Did she think you're lying? Yeah, she thought I was lying. I was, no I way. was full of shit. I know for fa- no one would make that up. No. You couldn't write this. No. No one would believe you. No. I mean, you literally, I mean, euphoria is probably cool for you because you're like, oh, that's like, it's like watching your. It's kind of like my high school. Yeah. No, it's like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing heroin and. Oh, I don't know. I didn't know. Having sex with I didn't really watch it. I thought it was more of a. Is there drugs going on? So much drugs. So much heroin. So much sex. A lot of dick. There's a lot of dick in it. Hell yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Maybe the Republicans were right about it. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) 
Uh, but their life, it, it just, yeah, I get, I don't get why people are like so pissed that they're glamorizing drugs. We're not glamorizing drugs. Like I thought the point was this is bad. Yes, exactly. That's well, why we're talking about it. That's why I have conversations. A lot of people, I had some guy yell at me, kind of like give me shit about why are you getting so deep with these artists? Like, why are you trying to like what the get hell? the bad what things out of What does he want you to ask him about? Like, yeah, you want me to write, talk about the same fucking things you What's hear every your day? Fa- uh, favorite band growing up? Yeah, what, you know? what? Tell me about the guitar solo in track three of record. Yeah, it's like I don't give a fuck about that. I, I want to talk about you. That guy's favorite band is a jam band. <laughs> well, jam band guys, God, they all think they're journalists and they all think they're music business experts. I just—it's like fantasy football to them. The way what? they look at music. Music sometimes. Yeah, well, I don't get why people take... There's, like, they have to know everything about the business. It's like, just like the band. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Speaking of... Stop interviewing so hard. Yeah, like, what do you want me to do? Just do don't me- listen, then. I know. But, like, the time... Now that you get more success... I'm getting more successful as an interviewer, blah, blah, blah. Now people are, like, ex- like feeling like I need to sugarcoat these interviews and not talk about addiction and not talk about whole, mental health. I thought that was like, the whole reason people like this is because you don't do that. I know, but like, yeah, ex- ex- exactly. So you wanted to be like every other podcast with like Why? six listeners? It's like, that's the worst thing. I'm like, where'd you grow up? Just like, just read down the Wikipedia. For, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst thing about, um, you know, just uh, doing something that you're passionate about and well, that yeah. you love to do and like love to get to know people via a public space and like having people be open in a public space is still people are going to shit on it. A wise man once said, tell the haters they can suck your dick and vagina. Let's go. Back. My guy. Yeah. I'm pro Andy today. huh? I fu- you are it's fucking on fire. It's your birthday. Thanks buddy. I am pretty. People think I'm meaner to you than I actually am though. Yeah. It's fun. You're people, not mean to me. The best is when people come up to me like at Cervantes and they're yeah. like, Andy's dumb, right? I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna riff on Andy with you. I know. Pay twenty bucks for my cameo, and I might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this shit ain't free, especially on the podcast yeah, form. Yeah, come on. Um, yeah, God, people are so soft now. It goes to the euphoria thing. It's like, oh, they're glamorizing sex and drugs. It's like, no. The point is, it's bad. I don't know, like, why people are. They take. They're taking comedy so seriously now, and like because take- everybody's boring. Millennials are boring. It's sad. They write songs about their dog now, and they change words to be cute. If they don't want to talk, they say adulting. <laughs> They're scared to make doctor's appointments. You know what I mean? They probably like. <laughs> they probably wait till the mailman's on the elevator till they go get their mail, so they don't have to run into them. And they say floofer and do- millennials are so corny, dude. Do you think they lost their work ethic? God, we're this is this is, we're old now. We're we're ma- not old. They're we are millennials. I know. I'm but I didn't lose. Own, but I'm a. I, I'm we're, talking about we're the archetypal ethic. millennial. You know okay. What, I mean? what is that? Like, like, so it's like, you know, I don't think they're lazy, though. I think that's a bullshit thing that the boomers say. Yeah. I think they have to work hard, way harder than people think to survive. Yeah, probably. exactly. Because you can't I'm afford more, houses anymore. We can't fucking afford yeah. rent. We got to have four jobs to get something to fucking happen. It's you like. To start a podcast. Got to start a fucking podcast and a dance party. We're sh- out here shilling whiskey. You know what I mean? You, like. You're you know, out here redoing Led Zeppelin songs. I have a cult. <laughs> you have a cult? Like. Like, my dad didn't have to start a cult. He just got a job. Yeah. Well, he just went in the military and he got a job. <laughs> now you got to start a fucking cult to my make money. My was a chemical engineer. I have to start a cult to make it. <laughs> Why are you guys making me do this? Just give me health care. Just give me health care. Ah! They're like, I love that meme of like. NickGerlock'sCult.org. I do have merch. What? <laughs> Nick, yeah, go to Nick's, <laughs> Nick's merch table. Oh, my God. I like how people are like. I like those memes going around like, we're building a hotel in space. We literally just want health care. What happens when nerds get too much money? We've been over this. I know. It's they fucked should, up. There should be, like, if you're a nerd in high school, once you make $100 million, you're done. You have $100 million, the rest goes to charity. Go home. Not even the government. Some charity. Some private charity. Yeah. Go home. Fuck. I got, I have to, I got to take care of myself this week because I know it's my birthday. Oh, my God. Yeah. What are we going to do about this? When do you leave? Wednesday? I leave Wednesday. Oh, Fuck. man. I got a couple of days off from you. And I you know. And my girlfriend's going out of town. What am I going to do, Nick? I know they're going to just try to, they're trying to, they're going to try to trash me. You want me to, I'm going to come Friday and hang out and I'll just, I'll ward them off. Be my bodyguard. Should I bring my horn? Yeah. I won't even charge you. What? If you is, that, th- is that your birth, my birthday gift? If you want to throw me some cash, <laughs> give me a ride. <laughs> Speaking of cash, repsy.com. Hey, because it's my birthday, do you want to do the ad? 
Yeah. For my birthday gift? Look, yeah. Yeah. Birthday parties are hot right now. Yeah. Might need a DJ for it. Or a band, even. Depending how rich you are. If you're on Repsy, you're probably rich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sign up for <laughs> Repsy.com. Because they have some great artist. But it's also... High fees. No. Uh, you do it. That's Repsy.com. I don't like doing that. Uh, why not? No, I'm just kidding. You're He's just like, I don't get paid on this podcast. You're just better at it. Repsy.com. Do you have a band... Are you a wedding planner? Are you a venue that isn't owned by Live Nation or AG? I like AG. I like AG. Live Nation's cool, too. I mean, they did book your whole tour in the fall. <laughs> Live Nation did. We did do a lot of Live Nation yeah, yeah. shows this summer. But if you're just an independent venue owner and you need some bands to play, sign up for Repsy.com. And bands, sign up for Repsy.com. Yeah, DJ Sleepy Let's get the connections. Yeah. Dude, DJ Sleepy is gigging without me. Good. I love that Scott's taking gigs away from this indie episode. We're going to have a great week. <laughs> We're going to have a great week. It's my birthday. I'm turning 34. Week. What? And we got Screwball Whiskey. Oh, yeah. Our sponsor, Screwball. Hell, yeah. I, I would drink, drink right it right now, now but I can't drink. Car, yeah. my, head, my head is spinning. But uh, Screwball Whiskey. Peanut butter whiskey. It tastes organic like Whole Foods. Yeah. And we are doing a hashtag called Screw Frasco, where you take pictures. You can make, you could razz me, you could rip me up. You can make you fun can, of me too. If you, you can want. make fun of Nick, but um, I'd love to see a Nick Gerlock impression. Yeah, if you got a Nick <laughs> Gerlock impression, you got a Frasco impression. Hashtag Screw Frasco and tag Screwball Whiskey. And the the one with the best video, we're gonna give them free tickets to our concert. Price we're giving out a pride but... package of Screwball stuff. I'll do something. Yes, Nick is gonna. Whatever they want. Do yeah, he'll he'll make you a cameo. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So um, let's get this going. Let's let's have fun with it. I, I'm so thankful. It is that good. We're just not drinking because it's like 11:30. It's 11:30. I would normally drink, and I already I drink just alcohol. I'm disgusted by alcohol. I right actually now. drank a lot for me this weekend. Yeah, I, I mean we've it. ripped it up. I went to your show we at did. New Conscious that started at midnight, didn't end till 3:30, 4 o'clock. Yeah, and then I had a two o'clock rehearsal. The then you had a two o'clock rehearsal, <laughs> and then I just kept it going. Kept it going. And I just kept, kept, kept Sometimes it going. Sometimes it's better to keep it rolling, though. Yeah. But sometimes that train's got to stop somewhere. And it, it stopped up today. And it stopped at And Frasco I'm going to go and right after this address. is done. We're going to I got. We're gonna make Benny's little cooking show. And then I got to have dinner with Scott. And then I am going to watch Euphoria. And then I'm going to go to bed. Well, let's have a great week. I'm oh, actually... Yeah. Thanks for cheering me up because I was like dreading. I was like fucking, oh God, I'm going to sound like a piece of shit today. But I'm going to have a great were. birthday. That's why I, did that. I appreciate Plus that. It's your birthday. And uh, thanks for letting That's me. That's why I'm a good co host. And yeah, thanks for hearing. I love when people make fun of me for being the co host. Like <laughs> Enjoy the though. kitchen dwellers. No. <laughs> We've been talking for 40 minutes. Oh, we can go long. It's just a kitchen dweller. It's just bluegrass. <laughs> Don't you have a drummer? <laughs> Kitchen Joe's are putting out a new record, so we're going to... manages them, right? Yeah. We, got, yeah. we had him at the show, so it'll be fun. I like Deciani. All right. Let's, we're done. We're going to have a great week. Bye. I'm going to feel good. I'm not going to go on Instagram. I'm not going to put nitrous into my body once this tank is over. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I'm going to take a couple of days off from drinking, and then I'm going to go to have my birthday. And this is the first time I felt old. 34. I don't know why. You look young. I feel young. I feel good, but I just like been. Th I had that epiphany when that when the the younger generation of DJ people, <laughs> DJ you, listeners, were oh. at Scott's show, and they're like, "What are you guys listening to? What are you dancing to?" You're I'm like, like "We're listening to DMX. <laughs> we're listening to some of the most popular songs in recorded music history. You loser. <laughs> you are wrong. You are the one who is wrong. You are young. I am not old. You are young and inexperienced." Oh uh, well, enjoy Kitchen Dwellers, and um, to be continued. You want to close this out with me? TBC, baby. And thanks for all the birthday wishes. We're going long. We're going long. People okay. like it. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Next up on the interview hour is our friends, Kitchen Dwellers, all the way from Montana. That's where they're from? I, I didn't know yeah. where they actually. They're badass. Kitchen Dwellers are putting out a new record. They came over the house. They just uh, played the Ogden. They're, they're getting really big in Colorado. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love bluegrass, and I'm... As I go more and more into the bluegrass world, yeah, I'm, I, this this band's one of the best bands out there. I, hey, thought they, I honestly thought they were from Boulder this whole time. Really? Yeah, yeah, they it's do play Colorado a lot. They're so big here. I yeah. thought they were local. And their man's by our boy Dave Deciani. Let's go, yeah. Dave! You're killing it with goose pigeons. When's their Ogden show? Kitchen dwellers. They already had it. Oh, when I, when I was here, but they play here every fucking two I months. Go see them. Yeah, we should go out. 
Take me with you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy my conversation with the Kitchen Dwellers. And uh, I'll catch you on the tail with my boy, Nick Gerlach. Hell yeah. Hot. Well, fuck yeah. <laughs> Sync it up. How you doing? We're doing good. What's life like being the Kitchen Dwellers? Hang out at your place. Use the mic. Use the mic. <laughs> <laughs> we get to hang out at your place. Life is tight, but we're still figuring Life shit out. Life is great, but we're still working on microphones. No, so. it's okay. God, you guys were so busy during quarantine. I, like, I felt like you guys inspired me to work hard. You were doing all the Zoom parties. You were doing touring. We were touring. Yes. And then we did yes. the streaming. Yes. And then you just went on the road and like kept it going. Like, What drives you to keep going through a pandemic? Uh, Man. I don't know. For a while there, we all just like, you know, kind of like everyone just kind of sat in our houses and just like yeah. wondered like, what, what the fuck did we do with all this extra time? Right. And then uh, at some point, one, those guys over there, DCiani. gave me a call. Dave DeCiani, everybody. <laughs> Shout out to you. Dave. Got, you guys want to work? Big Dick Dave. <laughs> Big Dick Dave in the building tonight. Wow. He's here, folks. He's, He's, here. Here. He's here. Good in manager. The, in the flesh. And, uh, and Dave called me, um, cause I think I was the only one that was like at home. Like everyone was kind of all over the place doing their own thing. Cause we had like a break from tour. Swain was in Iceland. Actually, he was on vacation. He almost got stuck in Iceland. Oh my God. That would have been a whole different chemistry if you got stuck for like those six months. Yeah. He like, he like made it on like the last plane out of Iceland. He said there was like a, a while where we thought he might not come. They might so what what were those texts like? What's that? What were those texts like? Hey, I'm stuck in Iceland. I might not. I might not be back. I might not be back. Uh, they were canceling. He said he was just like sitting there. He's watching all the flights getting canceled, and then somehow has made it out. Yeah, it was like the last the last flight to the U.S. It was like Ricky Vic to L.A. like canceled. Oh Chicago, my god, canceled. god! And it went down all all the way to Boston, and they put him on a flight to Boston. Think about how lonely that would have been being quarantined. It, it probably like how what does how does he afford anything? You know, how does he afford a house or, or do do people put him up? Like, does the hotel put him up? Like, all those questions like that. That's got to be fucked up. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Of, yeah, that's a lot of questions to try and answer. So all of a sudden, he gets home. <laughs> he gets home. You guys yeah. take a couple months off, right? Yes. And, was it good? Uh, was a couple months good? It was great. Yeah. I mean, at first, at first it was because we, you know, we're going so hard. And I mean, the circumstances were awful, but, yeah. you know, a break was, it was like, it was a change. Yeah. yeah. We'd been touring pretty hard for several years at that point. I bet Joe loved the break. You're like a mountain man, aren't you, dude? Yeah. The break was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life at the point in time. Why? It's just because we've been going so hard. And I think I was just like longing for that home vibe in my life definitely missed that part were you feeling burnt out by the end of the year tour feeling, season i wasn't feeling burned out i was just like felt like i was missing something in my life like what home yeah like you know, bed like, yeah yeah bed dog you life. married yeah you, you have know. a dog you have a whole family mm, no you, kids yet but soon yeah a lot of plants we got a lot of plants those are your children yeah so how long did it take until you wanted to get back on the road or, or were you starting to get comfortable with the well, home we, life? We stayed so busy during the pandemic. It was almost like we were on, like we were working damn near as hard as when we were normally right. on the road. And I think we were fortunate because we all live in the same proximity. We could all like be part of the same like COVID bubble in a sense and like yeah. still work our asses off. We're one of the very few bands, at least that I know that like we're of bands that we're friends with that like we all live in the same town still. So how do you guys not hate each other? <laughs> that's a great question i don't know <laughs> you know it's like you <clears throat> not saying that in like a, a weird way it's just like when you spend your whole time together on a van oh yeah and then you go home and you still see the same motherfuckers yeah yeah, yeah. it's like you're still on tour well, a little bit luckily there's lots of space in montana there's uh there's you know you can get outside and yeah. go and not have to see anybody any humans yeah depending on where you go so that's that's probably a factor, I imagine. From doing that tour with you guys when we did those national parks, the streaming, mm -hmm. that was when I really, we, I felt like we became friends. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Absolutely. And what I realized from that is like how much you guys yearn from that. Like you fucking love, is that the right word? Yearn? <laughs> <laughs> how much you guys love that? Sure, sure, You need sure. that in your life. 
I don't know about you, Max. What do you, was that part of your vibe too? You're a city kitty, right? Uh, I, I, I uh, well, I, <clears throat> I grew up in in Illinois, but yeah. no, I mean, I've I've lived in in Montana for a while now, and uh, yeah, that's why it was sweet to do the national park thing because it was like we were able to go be where we all like to spend time mm-hmm. and play music for people. Yeah, like how how important is the outdoors to the type of music you guys are trying to write? Very, very, for sure. Yeah. It's always a factor, I think, because like Joe's from Alaska, he's he's from no like shit. southeast mm-hmm. Alaska, so he grew up like you know on the coast Water. fishing and <laughs> and you know and yeah, like shitting in holes and shit, or like <laughs> we went we went out and visited. <laughs> we played Alaska, and we went and basically you know saw where he grew up. And you guys did Alaska tour, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, in your hometown. We didn't play an official show. It's kind of hard to work out a real show, so we played an open mic and then just like played for a whole night at an open mic. But and we played we played a festival up there at Salmon Fest. But uh, what was it like coming back to your hometown? It was awesome. I mean, I like ever since this band started, like that was like I want to get them up there. Like, I want to get them up there so bad. So we finally made it happen, and it was it was cool. What did you What did you guys see in Joe that you didn't see before from going to his hometown and seeing his friends and seeing all that stuff? Well, a lot of things about Joe made sense. <laughs> like yeah, what? No doubt. Like okay, what? so complete so, lack right. of awareness of any pop culture. <laughs> so, and this is common throughout throughout. Uh, there, a lot of Alaska kids went to school in Bozeman in, in college, where we all met, and a lot of them are, are from Juneau and like grew up with Joe. And we found this to be congruent across the board that kids from Alaska clearly did not have the same childhood as the rest of us did for obvious reasons, but also in the, you know, they get TV and internet and stuff up there. And so, but we, you could like throw out like a Nick at night reference and Joe or any of his friends. Noah star. Then what, what other reference does he have right, right away? Right away. Uh, well he did think, uh, the third Jurassic Park was the best oh, yeah. in the franchise. All right, respect. Respect. I'll give you that. I like that yeah. one, too. Oh, yeah. I like that one, too. I did. <laughs> well, I think it was Jurassic Park 3. Yeah, yeah. that's what I said. Oh. Yeah. yeah. With, like, the weird, like, chicken-looking dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Like the, yep. Look yeah, like yeah, a rooster. Like, yeah. Really? The little yeah. ones? The, yeah, the big one, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is, that was a different re- reaction than most people give. I think the first time we heard him say that, Swain just went, the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, how dare you? Yeah, yeah. first of all, how dare you? So it must have been easier to like really dive into music if you didn't have anything distracting you. I definitely played music like my whole life, but I don't know if it was, there was a lot to distract you up there. I mean, there's a whole world that Mm. doesn't really exist in a lot of other places. So we got to get outside and do a lot of stuff outside. Did it distract you or no? It just seemed like you're you're a badass. I would say so, Um, but... Music was definitely a part of my childhood. There's a really good community, music community there. There is, open. yeah. Like pick-in and stuff? Um, Yeah, there's a thing called the Alaska Folk Fest, which has like jams all over town throughout a, throughout a week in the spring. And uh-huh. people come in from all over the world for that. It's a good little... Oh my God, I have so many questions about living in Alaska. Do you, like, do you go on trips where like you're like by yourself? Um... I don't know if I've ever done like a solo solo trip, or like with a your lady or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Go out. I mean, we we go like camping in the middle of nowhere all the time. What about like fucking but, bears and shit? Yeah, there's bears all over. There's lots of bears in Alaska, but they're not as aggressive as the grizzly bears in the lower forty eight. Yeah, they're actually. they're a different breed. Like I don't have the same fear of brown bears up there as the grizzly bears here. They, you ever there's any, just a different kind of aggression with them. You have any like experience of like almost getting like. This is a scary moment in the wild. Mm. Dude, what about the story with your with Mapes and the black pepper? What? The, uh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you might know the story better uh, than I do. So his his uh, his stepdad, Craig Mapes, who we went to visit up there. Um, Mapes and Joe's mom live on this island off the coast of Juneau called Chichigoff Island, and it's like the most remote I've ever been. At easily and i grew up in montana so but you're out on this island and you're like kind of in the like ocean like the sound is it this what you Tannic call that inlet and then chatham yeah. straits out there yeah and so mapes was telling us this story that he like they were out 
hunting deer on one of the islands next to the island that Joe's parents live on. And they shoot this deer. And then Mapes is with this kid that you guys know. He's like your age, but like he, he was out with Mapes at the time. The kid was like 12 at the yeah, time. That's Rudy. Rudy. I, I remember the story now. Yeah. And so, so what happened? Yeah, you'll tell it better than me. Okay, so <laughs> Hell yeah. just trying to be polite. <laughs> so to be continued. Yeah, to be continued. Uh no, so they so they, you know, they cut up this deer and they get ready to pack it off this island, and all of a sudden there's all these bears around and they're kind of circling them and following them through through this timber and and uh and you know, kind of circling around because they want that deer carcass. And so the kid that's with Joe's stepdad all of a sudden thinks like we're going to put black pepper on this deer meat and that smell is going to confuse these bears. And so they put black pepper on this, on a piece of deer meat and lay it on the ground and leave it, but take the rest with them. And they leave and this bear comes up and sniffs this meat and like inhales all this pepper and it like confuses, he loses their scent and they're able to like get off of this Island. And it was, Mapes was telling the story and How I thought it was 12 his year old idea. knows this. Yeah, Alaska, dude. That's what I'm fucking talking about. People are stronger out there. I will not survive an apocalypse. I swear. Joe will fucking survive an apocalypse. Oh my God. What about, okay, so like you're writing music, you're thinking about all these stories of like, and you know, you're a big camper too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always see you always roaming. Like, <laughs> like fucking. <laughs> You seem like you know the terminology. Yeah. <laughs> what? When you're writing lyrics, like, yeah, like, I want to go back to that. Like, how important is the outdoors to what you're trying to do? And think, what you're trying to write about? I think it's pretty pivotal for everyone in this band just because of the way that we were all kind of raised and, and grew up. And it's like, it's not necessarily that we like reach for it when we're riding. Cause that seems to be kind of like the bluegrass thing is like, you're, you know, you're, it's always like, there's some sort of natural element that a lot of songwriters, if it's not coming naturally to you, to them, they're kind of reaching for it. Like I, I want this to be that sort of like mountain sound or, or something like that. And I don't know if that's the way that any of us write songs, but it is kind of always an element there. And I think that's just because of the reality that we grew up with and it's just a different type of reality than growing up in a city totally so like what are like what are your main themes when you're writing main themes i don't know a lot of like i don't know for me i guess just for me a lot of a lot of themes like recurring themes is like sort of like the darker into things i'm like i am before i ever played bluegrass i was really into punk and metal and all that stuff and then when I got into bluegrass, it was because of Jeff Austin, um, which is kind of that same, same sort of element. Um, and also I'm like, I, you know, in addition to like the outdoors, but like also like into like horror movie type stuff and like, um, you know, kind of like those like outdoorsy legends, like Indian legends and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's always kind of an element in a lot of the stuff that I write, but I don't ever try to like make it a certain type of song. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of whatever, just whatever comes. Is it harder for you to write stories about other people versus stories about yourself? Uh, I don't know. I never, I know, I don't know. I've never thought about that. I have I, a really hard time writing about myself. I find it way easier to write about other people because I have a hard time being honest with myself. I think. What, what do you think stems that? Um, I don't know. Insecurity, maybe. You afraid to be the person <clears throat> that, you see with not people around you? Maybe. I don't feel like I'm that much different a lot of the time, but I think just talking about like the past is hard to be honest about everything. Yeah. I, I agree, man. It's like, I don't know. Like I like shake sometimes when I think about the person I used to be, like I kind of have this like, I like convulsion. Like, yeah. Where it's like, Pins I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed of who I used to be, but also like, I wouldn't be where I am now and realizing my faults yeah. without, without that doing guy. all that shit. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's, it is such a tricky thing. Insecurity. Like, uh, what are you most insecure about? I don't know. Bears. 
<laughs> it's a tough question. That's like, a I don't really know either. Question. I don't know. What are you, Maximus? But I'm, you're wild. You're getting deep here. <clears throat> uh, I, I what am I most insecure about? Bear stories. Now we're going <laughs> yeah, deep. Yeah, now we're <laughs> taking a dive. We're like, come on in to yeah, the dark wow, world with yeah. bears. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't thought that much about my insecurities, I suppose. Yeah, isn't it weird how we 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 think about all the other things in our life, but when it comes to us, we we don't know, we barely know ourselves as yeah. much as... That's basically how I approach every day that I don't know probably much of anything. And do you think that makes us happier? Uh, it makes getting through the day a lot easier. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, ignorance is bliss in a way. Because when we were kids... yeah. I remember like not thinking about any of this shit. And I was happy as fuck. The minute I started thinking about like, oh, people could be depressed and people can be insecure and people could be overthinking what other people thinks of us. Yeah. Then I started getting sad and like fucking insecure about myself. Yeah. What do you think it is? Just living? Do you think we have to yeah, experience more, that? More experiences. The more, I mean, if you live your life long enough, there are going to be plenty of experiences that will be probably hard to shake. Yeah, who you 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 were telling me about a book, uh, a relentless. trainer, relentless. I feel like this is like the I, psychology dude. of finding your your most potential as an athlete, as a musician, out of anything, right? Yeah. And what do you what what are the things he mostly says about finding your full potential? Uh, well, just being kind of unapologetic in your uh, your pursuit. Um. And just how, I mean, he was talking about athletes, but how, you know, certain athletes in order to perform at the level that they are, they just, they are so determined and will not take no for an answer. And they just push past where, you know, the average person would, would probably quit. Yeah. What about us? I mean, we're kind of doing that. We toured through a pandemic. We we made everything work. We played Zoom parties. I saw you motherfuckers did like a hundred Zoom parties or something. Yeah, we were yeah. on we were on tour, but we were in our own. Shout out to DC Ani. <laughs> Let's go making the boys money wherever, wherever he can. Um, but it's got to be hard. Like it's got to be a mind fuck, right? Like the yeah. I, the whole thing is music, you yes. know, and like whatever it takes to keep the music going is how we're gonna approach your career, how you're going to approach your passion. So why yes. can we do that as for our individual mental health? That's, that's a good point. Cause I think that's how, that's kind of how I treat what we do just as far as like keeping it going and being able to make things work when it seems like they're not going to work out and, right. you know, doing, doing uh, what's good, you know, for, for the band and, and what's going to, you know, get us in front of a lot of people and, and uh, make us connect with more people across the country. That's kind of how I treat that for sure is kind of, um, or try to with that, like relentless sort of attitude. Mm -hmm. um, even though at times it is very difficult. Um, it's gotta be right. Just, I think just the, the way the career is built in general, just the, the music business and stuff, uh, you know, it can be hard. Not that, not that I, uh, am complaining or in a position to complain at all. I think, uh, you know, this is like the dream for sure. But the dream could also be hard. It's, it's like that idea Max said, like yes. the, the idea where we have to give our whole selves mm -hmm. to even be the 1% who, who's fortunate enough to do this every day. Yes. You know, sure. music, not a lot of people make it in music. No. So it's like, no. I, yeah, I appreciate the f being fortunate, but in it, it's gotta be, it's the hardest when you're giving 120% to something that is for other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, it's sure. like, where, where are we? Where are we? Like, well, we got to uh -huh. leave some for us. This is why I'm fucking... Let's go to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need that other side. And that's why I could get why you were burnt out. I get why I, we were all burnt out. Like, yes. when I talk to musicians about the quarantine, they're like, it was a relief. We finally breathed. Yeah. You know, take the money away. Fuck the money right now. Yeah. For your own personal growth. Like we breathed, we finally breathed and took a second to like, Oh yeah, there's stuff outside of the van and yeah. 
loves gas stations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Fact. So what made so did, from that? Have you worked harder, or did you, are you taking more time for yourselves now after the quarantine? Because uh, you guys are working your dicks off. I well, I feel like things got a little more like organized, maybe. Because mm-hmm. we we started renting a spot in town, like a little studio where we keep all of our gear. Uh, we have like merch there, and that basically became like a daily office. Like we go in there every day and we work on stuff. Sick. So things yeah. definitely became a little more, a little more like organized, and that's, I mean, being in a band is that easier a now? Orga- a little more organizations, yeah, nice. for sure. Yeah, we. I mean, at least, uh, yeah, from a personal standpoint, um, it definitely like made it a little easier on me to like you know kind of com- compartmentalize that part mm-hmm. of my life and be able to go some place during the day and and be like i'm gonna work on this because i need to work on it but at a certain point i'm gonna walk away yeah and i'm gonna go home that's the problem about having your work office in your house yeah Yeah. you're hearing a lot of that right now people working from home yeah Uh it's gotta be hard on people right yeah i would assume so i think that's the best part about being a musician is like we make all our money being com- so far away from home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then yes. we could come home and we could actually appreciate Enjoy it. Like the stillness. Yep. What was the first moment where all this hard work, like what do was it a show? Was it a record that you guys were like, damn, our our work is paying off? I think for for me it was a lot of like the people that we've been able to work with. Yeah. Like the you know, the first album was we worked with Andy Thorne and we were like, holy shit. Yeah, Thorne likes me. Dude, he was on Kelly yeah. Clarkson. Did you see I that? I know, yeah, I saw dude. that shit today. <laughs> what was that about? I was telling Thorne right before you all came. I'm like, this motherfucker's on Kelly Clarkson <laughs> talking about foxes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's led. Okay, keep going. blowing up. But yeah, like, I mean, that, uh, when Dave helped us get to Red Rocks, like, yeah. fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, that was Red an Rocks amazing was a big moment. one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's sick. Yep. Fuck yeah, Dale. Clap yeah, it up yeah. for Dave one more time. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, Dave. Let's go, Dave. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. But so, even just like, you know, sometimes we'd have like a killer show with so when you're not at many Red people Rocks, and it was great. When we had Red Rocks, did you guys have that moment where you guys all looked at each other like on yeah. stage? Like, yeah. I think it was right after. Uh, there was actually, this is actually pretty good. This is a pretty good story. Uh, so, uh, Right after Red Rocks, they like you like get you know you get done and you you like go to your your like back green room stuff and we like we all had a moment together right and it was like awesome like fucking well done boys like that was that was pretty fucking cool I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that that would ever happen you know and uh, then we go out you know they let you out the little there's a little side door next to the huge stage and because all of our parents are there but like it's Red Rocks so they have to like mitigate who yeah. comes in and goes out and whatnot. And so our parents are there and like, everybody's crying. Like everyone is like, it's like such like a, you know, I love that. you know, it's, it's, it's such a cool moment. But so my dad comes up and hugs me and he's like, my dad's like, I'm so goddamn proud of you. And he's crying. And so like, I kind of start crying and he hugs me. And then my mom's right next to him. And in between me hugging my dad and hugging my mom, like I hug my dad and then go to turn to hug my mom. And in between that, this wook just like squeezes in between them and comes up and hugs me and is like, I'm so fucking proud of you, man. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and my parents are like, and my parents are like, who is, who is this? And I'm like, I don't know. Mother. Oh, you're like, Hey bro, chill. I'm, yeah. I'm about to, I'm crying with my dad right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah, but that, yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a great moment. Was it, that, were your parents there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your parents there too? All of yeah, them? All of our parents were there. A bunch of like other, uh, extended family. What'd your parents do? Uh, Were they, they stoked? Oh yeah, they loved it. Oh my god! I've probably never seen my mom dance so hard. That's so amazing. Yeah, I was like, my I saw my mom in the crowd. She was crying. I'm like, this one's for fucking you, mom. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. off camera. I'm yeah. like, mom, I fucking love you. We did it. I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just like a, it's like a quarantine Red Rocks. It's not even fully packed. You know, I'm just like, we fucking did it, mom. Yeah. We fucking. Did <laughs> what about your parents? Joe? They came oh, out from awesome, Alaska. Dude. Um, yeah, actually, my so mom cool. and stepdad came down from from Chichikov Island, and yeah, my dad, my dad and stepmom were there too. What'd they say? Uh, I mean, they're just they're stoked. So, did you guys have like a band powwow? Like, looked at each other, like, "Wow, what now? <laughs> What's next?" 
Are you, are your brains like that? Where like even when you're in the moment, like, all right, what what What's are we gonna next? do now? Let's let's keep this let's keep yeah. this train popping. You know, sometimes for sure. I feel like some yeah. Sometimes it's like hard to like. Is it hard to appreciate that? Yeah, stay in that moment. You know. I Is definitely like, get the imposter syndrome with that kind of stuff. Yeah, tell yeah, me about that. Yeah. Like what what goes through your head when you're when you're finishing a project or when you're finishing a show or finishing a tour? Um I think I get it most when there's a lot of people coming to see us where I and I have no idea why. That's where I really get you're it. Like, like why do you like us? Like there's 500 <laughs> people coming to see us in <laughs> fucking Charleston. Yeah. Like what what's the, like I just didn't it doesn't make sense to me. So, yeah. Um well, God, Joe, I'm going to pump you up right now. You're good enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're strong enough. You got all the fucking tools. You're hot as fuck. You fucking eat salmon with your your, your teeth. God damn it. You, you kill them with your teeth. You shouldn't be ashamed of... Um, being success- I don't know if you're ashamed of it, but... I'm not yeah. ashamed. It's just, I still just don't believe it. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? I don't believe it either. Like, I don't believe that I'm successful. I don't know if that's just my mechanism to keep working because once i feel like i've done something i move on or something in a sense i don't know if that makes any sense yeah yeah for it's like, sure it's hard for me to appreciate the moment like yeah when i'm in it because i'm always thinking about tomorrow or the next but like when you're in a situation like red rocks your fucking parents are there yeah and a whoop steals a hug from you and your dad. You know? It's like, Papa. It's like, hey, Papa, we're having our moment. And they're like, hey, brother, we got ketamine in the back over there. <laughs> no, it's got to be fucking tough. But um, that's exciting, boys. And I want to yeah. talk about this. What Are you excited about this? Yes, we are excited about this. This is actually the Wise first time River. we've seen it. It's yeah. a hot. It's a hot. We want to touch it? Yeah. I got yeah. this before y'all. That hot yeah. off the press. I know. That is... Uh... want to touch it? Touch it. It's your record. That's awesome. Why Wise River? Uh, Wise River kind of came uh, came from the song. So we had this like uh, this songwriting uh, session where we went up. Um, we were on tour like before COVID, and we went up way north. We had a few days off, and we went, like we were in Maine, and we went like way north in Maine, like almost to Canada. Um, to write it. Um, we were just like working on songs and we were just like, this is what we want to do. We had a couple days off and we're and like, sick. you know, this is kind of building off the fact that we're a weird band and we were just going for some isolation. Let's go. And, Joe, uh, rubbing off on yeah, it, uh-huh. And, uh, so we got this cabin on the beach and it was like, it was freezing. It was so fucking cold. The ocean was freezing. And, uh, but the first song that came out of it was the song Wise River, um, that Sean wrote, and it was from him and one of our buddies going to, they went on like a camping trip, um, and they stopped it. There's a little town in, uh, in Montana, South of Butte called Wise River. Um, and they just like stopped into this, uh, this, uh, saloon, this Wise River club. And it's like this old cowboy saloon and it's been the same way far as i can remember um it's the only kid, thing and i mean know. it's it's like the you know the sign looks like it's the town of wise river but the, it's just this little corner saloon and a post office where'd you find this place um i'd been there as a kid um with my parents uh back in the day on like fishing trips and stuff yeah um and i think sean just went there as he was starting to sort of get into the outdoors um with our oh, buddy yeah. brad and uh and so that, since that was like the first song we were, and we were like, well, you know, we kind of have this like outdoors Montana theme that's kind of always occurring within our band, you know, and then there's a, there's a lot of recurring themes like that. So that's just what the album ended up being called. Do you um, all write lyrics? Yeah, we all write. So yeah. what do you, what, are, what were you guys writing about? What's this record about? Is it all different from your collective of? I mean, it's kind of all different, but the one thing that I sort of thought about with it being, you know, the name Wise River, because we, most of it was written, worked on, and recorded all kind of in like the, you know, the heart of the... During quarantine. During quarantine. Basically. <clears throat> but I, you know, I I feel like it kind of lent itself to a lot of people were having to confront a lot of things in their life, you know? Mm-hmm. There was a lot of tra- tragedy and people were just also like so many life changes for people, like work and home. So I feel like, you know... It, it's also kind of uh, commenting on just how, you know, 
we're hopefully coming out of this, everyone is a little bit wiser. Yeah. yeah. And it was, yeah, it was, it's definitely like a, a vibe for the, the state of the world or at least our world, I guess at the time. And it's definitely the one that we've worked like the most cohesively on. There is um, nothing in this fucking place, dude. Yeah, that's yeah, the whole that's, town. Yeah, that's, that's the whole damn town. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when when we uh, Joe, you are rubbing off on these dudes. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. we filmed there, and uh, and like half of that photo was on fire. There was yeah. a huge fire there, yeah, and we when, filmed when a we video filmed there. A video there, yeah. Um, oh, there was shit. a big forest fire there. Um. Corey Wong produced it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that was, that was another thing. part. So what the <laughs> fuck? You skipped past that, boys. <laughs> yeah. So we Corey Wong produced yeah, a bluegrass record? Yeah. Yes. And uh and that kind of came from um I guess he'd kind of like heard of us and and wanted he'd wanted to do a project with a string band or you know, a folk band, bluegrass band for a while. God, I'm so um, proud of y'all. <laughs> This is so cool. He's the man. And he's awesome. Yeah. And and yeah. He, and it worked and it worked out. It's um for the best, I think. He What did, he, what what'd you learn from him producing? We never worked with anyone like in I mean <laughs> the uh the pace at which we were fast. We recorded it in Frantic. in Minneapolis and we were I mean I I couldn't stop laughing when we were recording cuz like they're they're at the console and it's like, it's a table and a keyboard and a monitor. And th just seeing th like the, the table is <laughs> <Really>? like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, and, he seems like that. Oh dude. yeah. Oh, and he's one, two, three, four, here we go. And it, and his, and his brain is just, I love that. Yeah. You can just see the gears turning like the whole time. And, and you so, know, he's just like, you know, he's just a fucking genius when it comes to music. Did you ever get some hang time with him? We did a little bit. Yeah. At the end. Um, yeah. And we, re we recorded it all in four days. The whole record? Yeah. 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 I, see, I, I, I fuck with that. <laughs> I fuck with that. No time. Over I think overthinking kills process. Well, and that was a lot of it too, was he he would like he would like stop a lot of that shit short, like where someone would be like, Oh, I didn't feel good about my solo or I didn't feel good about that hit. And he was like, he was like, I'll it. fix it in post. It doesn't he's like he's like, <laughs> it's fine. He's like, we got what we need. It's fine. Next. And just like move right along, and <laughs> I fuck with that, and like, dude. And like where somebody might tell you like move along, you'd be like, no, motherfucker, like I've got to, let me try again. But when it's Corey Wong, it's like, all right, I guess we're fucking moving yeah, along. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but, sir. <laughs> yes. Damn, what do you teach about soloing? Well, he never solos. He doesn't. Solo. Yeah, he's a you know, oh, he's a funk, shit. He's funk. just like diamonds and fucking rhythm. footballs and fucking rhythm. Yeah. Like, oh, he must have loved the fuck rhythm. out of you. Oh, you guys are fucking rhythm kings, dude. He he. Yeah, I think well, he was I mean, proud. He had a great time. I think he had a great time. Yeah, because he must have been proud. No drums too. Yeah, and you're fucking keeping that, Joe. I gotta clap up for Joe one more time. Yeah, rhythm Here, God, for Joe. Funk, rhythm God, Joe. Funk. Rhythm God. Let's go, Joe. Damn. But there is. I mean, there are some songs on there. Because what was the hardest song to record on the record? Mm. Maybe years of my life. Years of my life, possibly. But he did a lot of, you know. There's a lot like he has a little footprint on that thing. Like some of his production work, uh, he like added some drums. Yeah, we had uh, we had a, somebody record some drums on there. Um, he, we made a drum track on a song. Like wow, it, there's a little bit of uh, a. We ventured into some newer sounds that are a little atypical. Look at you guys. Yeah. You guys are real fucking outdoors band, dude. <laughs> you guys are out here. Nothing. There's nothing here. Google this. Look at this. Google Wise River. Yo, yo, yo. Google Wise River. Look at the population. And also, I want to talk, while we're on the computer thing, I heard you tore your ACL, and we have that video. And we, we, do. I, I do want, we're popping that bitch out, too, because do you have time? You guys have time to talk? We have time. Dave, yeah. are they fine? Have, All right, You cool. have time. Yeah. Oh my god! Okay, I got two other. This name, this is pretty metal. So their oh, names okay. are the trees. Their Pop. names are the trees. So that is, uh, that's actually another. That's another outdoorsy kind of thing. What's that mean? Um, so that actually came from a friend of ours. Um, there was this Australian kid, uh, Mitch Upton. Shout out to Mitch Upton, everybody. Mitch Upton. Shout out, Mitch. Yep. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Yep. And uh, and if you know anything about Australian people or have any Australian friends, you know that they're. 
fucking crazy. Oh God, yes. Um, and and he, and he is, and he's he's a gem of a human, and and he was our roommate for a long time, and he was one of our biggest supporters when we were in college and stuff. Um, but he went on, so he does like very badass things. Like he went and ski patrolled in the Himalayas, and uh, and he works as a firefighter um, every summer. Uh, and he like he's he's probably ski patrolling. Um, this is he doing this winter in, in Big Sky. He's a working at the ski patrol, um, and does a lot of you know Australian skier saving people. So he, does yeah. a lot of, he does a lot of you know getting people out of sticky situations and stuff. Um, but this particular song, their names of the trees, um, is a pretty heavy story that he told us from working in, I think was it Northern California or Southern Oregon. I think it's Northern California, but there were the, those fires that were there um, a couple summers ago that were really bad. And he was there um, as an EMT working for the, um, for these firefighter crews for like, I think a longer season than he had ever been. Like he, he was working there. Like, you know, the fires went like late into the fall. Um, mm-hmm. And there was this one small town um, called Beachy Creek. Um, Hot. And there, um, the, the, this fire, I guess, went down the mountainside as the fire crew got there and then through the night cut over the, the road, the only road that led into town in this Canyon and then cut off the town and burned the whole down, whole town down. Um, and a bunch of people died and, and, uh, and Mitch was our, was like one of the people on the scene when this happened. Um, and he, and he's also a, uh, very accomplished writer. He didn't write the songs, but he wrote the story and Mm. sent us the story, sent Sean the story and like, and, but he, so he basically saw this like destruction and death and stuff. Um, and the thing, and one of the things that like him and Sean kind of put together out of it was the fact that in the news, they didn't mention that this town had burned down and they kind of mentioned that the area was on fire, but when it came down to it, what they were talking about on the news was the names of the trees that were in danger of going extinct from this fire and not necessarily the names of the people in this town that had passed away, um, in like this horrific fire scene. So that is why the song is called their names are the trees. Jesus. You guys are poets. <laughs> Sean Swain. That's, uh, that's a Sean, Sean Swain dude. song. Shout out. Yeah, I wanna, so who, what songs did you write on this record? Uh, I wrote see, uh, Drowning Again um, and Sundown and Bottom Shelf and Paradise Valley. What about you, Max? Uh, Smokestack. What about you, Joseph? Or get the bike. Stand at ease and years of my life. God. I love that you guys all write. That's fucking cool. It is cool. It, yeah. And it it gives us like a nice, I feel like a nice like even keel to the band. Like, you know, if, if I was writing all the songs, they might all sound like metal songs. Yeah. And if, it keeps things very interesting. Yeah. 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 And like, and your fan, it probably, it's like, and everyone like, you know, like your fans love you collectively, but like, I bet like some fans who love Joe or some fans who love Max yeah. songs, they're like, totally. That's my boy. Let's yeah. go get him, Captain. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, Let's yeah. go, boy. You know? Yes. Fuck yeah. So when's this record come out? Uh, April 29th. April 29th. You just announced it. You announced it on Tuesday. So, um, no, you announced it on Friday. It is yeah. Tuesday now. Yes, it is Tuesday now. <laughs> yes. So go grab this April 29th. It looks like it says one of 2000. So you're only making 2000 of these. Yes. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Limited edition people buy it. All right. Cool. Now to the best part of the night. When you blow out your knee. We have the video. (laughs) Pull it up. We got it. I got to see it. Before you pull it up. I I actually haven't seen this video yet. Hold on. Really? Is it cringy? Okay. Before I like start like laughing about this because I love falls and shit. (laughs) I watch ridiculousness all the time in the morning at 2 a.m. Give us what happened. So uh, we were in... Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, this was at Poor House? At the Poor yep. House. Oh yes. I know. Oh love the Poor God, House. I love the Poor House. It was a great night. It was a yeah, great night. sold out. Otherwise, great night. Um, and it was our first time there, actually. And it was going really well. And First set, second set, third set? First set went great. Second set was going awesome. And this was uh, the actually the end of the show. This was Very the, last, the song. last song of oh the second set. And um, 
we were playing uh, Ruben's Train, which gets a little metal in our band. And so there was like this like peak of the jam and I was kind of bent over soloing. And then I like went to like, you know, kind of up right myself. And uh, when I do that, I kind of like got to give it some oomph to get all this fucking hair out of my face. And heavy ass hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I was kind of headbanging. And when I did it, I like went back and my leg just kind of turned just in an odd angle. And I just like, all of a sudden was just like down on the ground. And, uh, and all everyone's, all, everyone else on stage just saw me fall. And so they were like, what the fuck? You keep dude? going. Like, yeah. So I was still playing. I was laying on the ground playing and, uh, and we were like kind of finishing out the song. And then Joe was kind of like, are you going to get up? Are you going to move? You good? And I was like, yeah. And I like went to get up. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, my leg won't straighten out. And, and then I was Did you like, finish the song? Like, thank we you. Were, it night. was in the middle of a jam. He, we were like, we, we were still playing. The, the three of us went and kind of huddled over him. And we were like, we were all just kind of playing. And we all had the thought like, why, you know, you can get up, dude. Like, we yo, got- yo, play this, play this, <laughs> play this video. Are you kidding me? This happened? This happened. Luckily, we have Stu to get it on video. <laughs> Whoa, this is a... Play, yeah, yeah. Do we have... Oh, we don't have audio. Um, it's fine. I just want... Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, and you keep playing like a fucking rock star. Look at this. You're down playing chords. You good? Everyone, look at Max. You good? You good? Oh, my God. Go back to that. Oh, my God. Damn. That's insane. That's part of the show. Go uh-huh. back to that. Here we there go. You go. Wow. So what happened? Did you guys finish the song? Uh, so everything came to like a slow screeching halt. Like Torin was just still up there. He's just like playing a little bit. And then we all stopped. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can see my knee on the side. Oh my so my knee, God. Was, my knee was like over here and I couldn't straighten my leg out. Cause my knee was like that. Look at Max kind of like, uh, what do we do? You're, like, you're laughing, but you're like, oh shit, you might be really hurt. Yeah. And, and at that moment, uh, you would not believe how many people in the building assumed to be medical professionals. Yeah. Like right away. <laughs> Just drunk as fuck. Like, I got it. this brother. This guy, th- this girl came up and like tried to like feed me orange juice because she was like, he's diabetic. He's, he's diabetic. Give him orange juice. And like, and Swain's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, get out of here. <laughs> they, and, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't clear anybody out. The EMTs came. We, so yeah, we, we were, went to the microphone and we're like, uh, does anybody in the building, you know, have uh medical experience? We have any EMTs in the building. And, uh, so somebody that was there who, you know, had been partying all night, yeah. but, they, but she was actually great. She came up on stage. She, she was, was like, an occupational therapist from Salt Lake. Yeah. Wow. And I didn't catch her name, but she helped out. She actually did help out. Oh, immensely. shout out to yeah. her. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. People helping people. Yeah. Wow. The best part about that though, is like, I lived, I've been, I followed this very, <laughs> I was like, Sipping tea, I'm like, damn, is he gonna? Because we all had bets if you're gonna keep going. Yeah, you're yeah. crazy like that. Yeah, 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 right, right. And we and you did. And I saw the next show, you're out there in a fucking wheelchair, and your leg is like this, yeah, dude. Like, yeah, they put me in a. That in a is some splint. metal shit, dude. I just want to give me a hug. It was it was punk rock, dude. I'm gonna <laughs> clap it up, dude. That's <laughs> that's metal. I got the a, show uh, goes on. I got a tattoo to commemorate it. Where? Actually. Bad leg of toy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were in uh, <laughs> we were in Vegas for Halloween after that, like a couple weeks oh, later, and uh, buddy, and that was like after the, that was at the little, end of the I first week a, of tour. I still had a brace on it too, so, so I was. So you like, had three weeks left. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 we did three weeks of tour after that. Yeah. Oh my god, buddy. So, okay, now I know we got to leave, but it's almost done. But I got. <laughs> How do you travel in a van with your leg like that all fucked up? That's got to be so painful. It actually wasn't that bad. Um, once they like got my knee in the right place, um, 
which that was painful. They did the, uh, the EMTs did that in the parking lot and, uh, what they popped it back yeah, in. Yeah, they popped it back in. And, uh, it wasn't like, like I, I have, I have like drunk a or anything. No, no. And, I, but I have a pretty high threshold for pain. I've, I've definitely fucked myself up good a couple times. Right. Um, and so like, uh, Max and Sean were watching this all happen and watch me get picked up off stage and like white as a sheet. And I was kind of like, stop looking at me like that. Like, <laughs> and, uh, well, your kneecap was yeah, yeah. way over here. Yeah. Oh my and, God. Uh, but then we get to the, the EMTs like put me out in the ambulance and then they just shut the doors. And the guy was like, he kind of turned around and he was like, all right, we're going to fix that knee. And I was like, we're not going to the hospital. He was like, no, we'll do it right here. And I was like, Oh shit. Okay. South Carolina <laughs> yeah. brother. We're going to do it right here. Yeah. And he was like, and he was like, so what I'm going to do, he's like, I'm going to, he's like, she's going to lift your leg up and like push your hip over. And at, and at the same time, I'm going to push your kneecap back into place. And I was kind of like, okay. And he's like, it's going to fucking hurt. And I was like, great. Thanks for that. <laughs> and, but then he did it and it actually, he way, way built it up and it was actually like instant relief Yeah, when he did it. But yeah, it was. And then uh, could you start walking on it or no? No, I tore, I tore one of my ligaments over here oh my that holds your kneecap. So I had to be in a splint the whole time I was on tour. And then <laughs> once I got Christ. off tour, I started going to PT and I've been going to PT and I am, oh. I'm kind of done now with PT. I'm finally like healed. So that is so fucking metal, dude. I'm going to clap it up <laughs> one more time. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Touring on a tour. Is it an MCL, ACL? What is it? Uh, MPFL. God, fucking. You are fucking hot, dude. You're a hot guy. <laughs> you do hot shit. Thank you. Thank you. Just stay hot. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, coming, from, coming from Andy Frasco, that means a hell of a lot. Dude, anytime you want to sleep over. You yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Look at this <laughs> carpet. <laughs> Look at this cheetah carpet. Um, guys, thanks for spending time. I know you guys are doing your tour, and um, I know that you're uh, just kicking ass out there, and I just want to let you know that I'm rooting for you. You guys thanks, are my brother. homies. Hell Likewise, yeah. I buddy. I fucking man. love y'all. Y'all the shit. We love you, too. Don't get in trouble. Joe, I'm glad you're finding help with uh, your your brain. That's really fucking, really <laughs> seriously. A lot of people are scared to go to therapy, man. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very true. they're in. It's like they feel like ashamed to go to therapy, and it we got to fight the stigma that therapy isn't something to be ashamed of. Like we go to the doctor for your knee, we totally. should be going to the doctor for our brain too. Absolutely. So. Good job, Joe. Max, I fucking love you. You're I love man. you, Andy Frasco. You're the man. You inspire me. To uh, watch or to uh, start, I started following that guy on Instagram, uh, the the author Tim Grover. Yep, nice. I like him. <laughs> Very nice. I'm I'm into, I'm into dudes like that. But um, one thing, one last thing, and we'll let you go on your rock star way. Um, at, when it's all said and done, what do you want people to remember this record by? Um, I think. Uh... There's definitely uh there's definitely some some heaviness in there, some some heavy topics and you know there's some some stuff about mental health and people kind of wrestling with their demons and stuff like that, but I think um in that in that in the same time there's maybe some hope in there. And uh yeah, I guess I hope that's what people remember it for. What about you, Max? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've throughout all of COVID, we've had people, you know, reach out and be like, you guys, like some of the streams we did, they were like, you guys literally got me through that week. And we were like, same. Yeah. You guys got us through that week. Seriously. When we did that. Yeah. Having something to look forward to at the end of the week, being like, we're going to go in and play music today. Yeah. That's, That's I huge. agree a hundred percent. I mean, you know, mu music has been the soundtrack and the highs and the lows of, you know, I think all of our lives. So yeah, if we can add to that, hell yeah. Fucking amazing. What about you, Joe? I just hope that record can be there for somebody sometime whenever they need it. Yeah. Okay. In any way. Boys, thanks for being on the show. Kick ass out there. Drink water. Fucking keep driving without any music on. I fuck with that. I love that. That's my favorite part about you, Joe. Just like, do, 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 do. I fuck with that. I do that too a lot. Yeah, I listen to like monotone vocals, like a talk radio show, yeah. or just straight silence. It's nice. Boys, I love you. Love Thanks you, man. Oh, yeah. Kitchen Thanks Dwellers, everybody. Brother. Let's go. Let's go. Kitchen Dwellers. Let's go. Hell yeah. Closing time.
What band was that? Eve Six. Oh, good one. Was it? No. Who was it? Look it up. Hold on. This is definitely not the Counting Crows. His voice. Same era, though. No, a little later. They're a little later. Uh, time oh, we just announced our Twiddle tour. I got to say that. Right. We're going on tour with Twiddle in April. Hell yeah. Uh, Northeast and Midwest. I love those guys. Grab your tickets. Yeah, it'll be fun. My, my We're ex- opening every night. It'll be fun. My old roommate in India is a light guy. Semi-Sonic. That's who it is. Oh, hell yeah. This is a music podcast, people. Wow. We should cover this. We're not covering this fucking song. Opening band. <laughs> We are opening for Twiddle, so show up early. It's more of a co-bill. <laughs> it's more of a co-bill. 60 60-40. 60-40 co-bill, but I guess we're the opener. God, I hate when <laughs> they fuck it. I hate, I hate, that's the most. Politics. I, the, the, that's yeah. one thing I don't like about the music industry. But they are, I mean. They're they big, are bigger, I get it. In that market especially. Totally. Yeah. I'm not saying them. I'm just saying like, we yeah. have to express that it's 60-40. Bro, you, I hate. It's like, hate. come on, let's just have a show together. Let's not all. I hate when it gets real ticky-tacky, like font size. Like, yeah. no one cares. Oh my God. You guys are losers. You are nerds. <laughs> No, Make. a lot of bands care, dude. I then they are I've nerds. had conversations with. I'm not going to announce them, but who? I like that they we're starting care. to talk shit a little bit. We won't say who, but they ca- they really care about how big your font is. Are they pretty successful? Yeah. Well, like no, they're on their way up. Mm, they're working they their way up. But like, that's a nerd thing to do. You're nerds, and you're wrong, and just chill out. No, know? but it's also the people who are really pushing for the managers and the booking agents. Of course, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you talk. Oh, you. Oh, spicy. A lot of managers are just nerds <laughs> that have no talent. I'm not talking about Brian. Hey, calm down. No, I'm not Brian. Talking about anyone. We're friends. We are friends with good managers. Yeah, and I'm agents. Talking about these guys that are like make friends with the guy in college. They're like the manager they fire when they get the real manager later. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Every um, manager isn't can't be good. I know. Brian Schwartz is amazing. Yeah, shout out to Brian. Shout out to Bon Giorno. I wouldn't call him a nerd at all. What? Neither of your guys are nerds. No. Brian's a little nerdy. The healthy way though. Yeah. Bon Giorno's uh I No, think, Bon Giorno's a G. Yeah, Gangster. He, I saw his baseball card collection the other day on Instagram. Ooh. You gotta see his vinyl collection. Really? Oh my god. This guy has an insane vinyl collection. Collector, I hardly knew her. Oh, uh, do I need to go to rehab? No. No? I don't think I'm that bad, right? I watch Euphoria. Oh. I watch Euphoria. Are you an alcoholic? And I listen to Elizabeth Cook. I don't I think I'm an I, I'm not qualified to tell someone if they need to go to rehab or not, especially while being recorded. Um no, but I don't yeah, think I need to go to rehab. I'm just talking friend to friend. Like, do you think I drink a lot? Mm. I think you drink less than people think you drink. Yeah, I think you drink more than you should. Yeah, you're somewhere so, in that range. I'm in the middle. I don't think it's rehab bad. Maybe just cut back a little. Like I could probably eat less junk food. You know, so you don't need to go to rehab for it. No, but I should cut back a little. You know, so moderation. What 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 makes you a sex addict? I've been thinking about that. Like, I get these urges. Yeah, um, but I mean, like, what makes that different than like a normal? You know, what that's I mean? a thing. That's a maybe that's true. But um, but I'm not trying to say sex addiction isn't real either. I don't but know. Like it's how, way worse than it was. I can I've I've been able to control it. I used to not be able to control it. To the point where you would just have sex with anyone that was interested in having sex with you. Yeah. So that's because like Tiger Woods is a sex addict, right? What was he doing? Oh, like fucking. He was just all over the everybody. Place. That's like when he got in that wreck and all that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there is sex addiction. But I I also feel like there's some celebrities out there that get caught doing stuff, and they it's kind of shitty what they do to real sex addicts, and they like say they're a sex addict. Yeah, and it kind of I don't think you're doing that, but like people that get like me tooed or caught in something, they'll mm-hmm. like use that as an excuse. It's like, oh, cool, you just threw all these sex addicts that don't assault people under the bus. Right. That's my take on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm a sex addict, but well, I, I mean. I get these. I'm just saying, how do you know when you're a sex addict and you're not just a dude? <laughs> I know. I get these crazy bender horniness where, like, I'll have to, like, beat off 20 times. I mean, how much are you exaggerating by 20 times? What, like, in a week? 20 times. Mm. So, like, four times a day. Those are rookie numbers, brother. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. It's like, it kind of, like, I could feel my body... It's like the same thing. I normally don't hey, Mara, smoke. We should, or should we put this in the promo? <laughs> <laughs> I normally don't. I could tell when my body's turning into that that angsty anxiety yeah, yeah. because, like, 
I'll like have the craves right when I wake up to have a cigarette. You know, maybe you need to be in an open relationship. What do you mean? Or like you have a ride or die girlfriend, but you can, but you can like have side stuff on the road and stuff like that. I I tried that. That didn't and work. People do that, and it's healthy for some people. I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm not jealous, but I'm also a jealous. Lot of them do go sideways <laughs> after a while. What? Although a lot of them do go, the ones I know that have done it, they do go sideways after a while. Some of them. Right. You know. You ever relapse on like say anything food? Like, do you ever just eat a bunch of no, fucking food? No, like I food? told you earlier, like I, when I quit smoking cigarettes, I haven't had one since that. One day. What did you do when you quit smoking? How much did you eat? I was already pretty fat and eating all the time. So, no, but like, what was your day like? What'd you fill I it with? I, I I don't know. I don't know. Nothing. I just smoke more weed, probably. Yeah. But uh, you know, I just quit one night. It was like right when I moved to Denver, and it sucks here. Yeah. I I was smoked like two packs a week. Right. And one time I was just like, "This is gross," and I threw them in the trash can, and I've never in a dumpster, it's not my in my house, out in the parking lot, so you can't go get it. Yeah. And I haven't had one since. It's crazy. What I'm you, saying is I have an extreme willpower. I normally do, too. Eh. It's just sometimes I relapse eh. into, like, either blacking out for five days or, like, you know, getting extremely horny and just, like, wanting to yeah. come all the time. I don't have, yeah. Maybe it, it's a depression thing. Maybe you just, you're, are you, yeah, maybe, maybe, it's like a, maybe that's what it is. When I get, when I get my know? depression waves, I yeah. feel like I need something to cope it. It's a hormonal thing. Maybe. Yeah. I need to figure out when that happens. I need to start going back to the gym and start going back into like regular habits because like I, I felt myself falling back into or maybe the old the habits thing, I had. Maybe more than depression. Oh, yeah. And I look at my phone. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm like waiting for something. Yeah, to, your phone. You, you got too much screen time going on. You want to no, know it's not, gross? You want to see how much phone screen time I had this week? Can I guess for yeah. a week? Yeah. And then we'll get to our show. We've already been talking for 30 minutes. I know, but this is a good one. Um, <laughs> How much do you think? How much screen time do you think For the week? Have? Yeah. 23 How hours. Tw- no, a day. Oh, a day. A weekly average. So, that, so it adds up every time you go and come back. I don't mm-hmm. know. Uh, four and a half hours a day. Oh. I'm down 56% from last week. What? That's because you went to Cervantes. Oh, it's Sunday. No. <laughs> Oh, Sorry. yeah, it's only been this week for six hours, um, and I've been hung over for three of them. Oh, this is disgusting. Let me hear it. Last week, what do you think it is? Average. Per day? Per day. I'm going to say five and a half. Five and a half hours? What is it? Worse? Twelve and a half hours oh of screen time. God. I didn't know that was even a, a phone could do that. I spent two hours a week... On barstool sports book <laughs> gambling now, I've spent. I told you, not you're not you're not allowed to gamble. Oh my god, this is disgusting. You're not allowed to gamble, dude. Last week, I spent 44 minutes last week on youporn.com, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. I come. That's what I'm telling you. The relapse. Thing. How do you I, find this? It's on your screen time. So I've spent. I spent an hour, only an hour last week on Bumble. I spent two hours on our fantasy basketball league. I spent. 22 hours and 51 minutes last week on Instagram. How many hours? 22 hours. And I've spent 20 hours messaging everyone back on my text messages. No, that can't be right. I swear, dude. Oh, my God. I am disgusted with myself. You see this? Seven hours on (laughs) NickGerlock'sCult.com. Damn, dude. Isn't that gross? What are we going to do about this? I need to get off my phone. This has to be a source of your anxiety. It is. I it's can't believe a- I spent 44 minutes on you porn. Here's the thing, though. Here's my pushback on this. You do, People are texting you. People are always contacting you and stuff. So how do we... Like, I missed 84 text messages within the 30 minutes. And they're not even, like, group texts. Really. No. Ugh. I'm trapped. If I had your... That, people, many people texting me, I would lose my fucking... I get anxiety mind. now. And, like... Now, like, I've been learning, like, it was, like, at, it was at your show, too, my filler of taking, because basically when I go out now, it's just me having conversations with everyone oh, and I taking I've, pictures, I've and I don't even get to, like, enjoy the yeah, moment sometimes. Yeah, you're very famous, Andy. No, I'm just, I'm just I just go to you. Cervantes and in my scene, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to, People like. People love you. It's just more of, like, a, I'm available. You're available. So You're very, like, Burt Kreischer in that way. 
Yeah. He had that thing where like fans were just start showing up to his house and all these people had his phone number. I was like, oh, that's so fresh. I got to call Bert and talk about this. You should call him back. How do you? <laughs> I think he has a probably similar phone thing than you. He has a burner. I need a burner. You need a burner. I think you're famous enough for a burner, buddy. I think we've done I it. I am disgusted that I was Get on Instagram for 22. What? For what? Andy Frasco is famous enough to have a burner phone now. There's only two reasons to have a burner. You're super famous or you're doing illegal shit. <laughs> um, fuck, dude. What What do I do? I need to get off Instagram. I'm on Instagram too much. Yes. I think that's what's giving me anxiety. At least you're too. not on Facebook. No, I, I, I don't go on Facebook at all. That's the dregs. It's just boomers arguing about the most basic political stuff right. you've ever heard in your life. It's like a CNN comment section. We have to end this episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Motivational speech for the day. Um, You're I'm, doing it. I'm doing it. Guys, we're just getting older. That's fine. We could be <laughs> sad about it. <laughs> so or we could fucking rip it up. Are you ready to rip today up? Are you ready to rip this year up? I don't care if you're getting older. Every day we get older. Every day we get closer to the grave. But what are we going to do with that time? We're going to fucking marinate in our shit? Or are we going to fucking live our best lives even if we have to follow weird dreams? Even if you have a new dream at 34 years old. Maybe I, maybe my dream is I don't want to be the on Instagram so sand, much. <laughs> maybe my dream is I need to stop beating off so much. Woo! Maybe my dream is... Screen time. Screen time. No more screen time. Maybe my dream is get a burner phone. Yeah. Bert, help him. Have a great day. I'm sure Bert's watching, train, <laughs> watching our closing. <laughs> but seriously, age is just a number. And I'm saying this to myself, too, because I've wa- been waking up lately like, fuck, I'm getting older, and I need to take care of my body. Because you never know when it's your turn to leave the fucking party, so we might as well live like we are going to die tomorrow. <laughs> Wow, that's really depressing, actually. Get that burner. I'm going to get a burner phone. It's over. You got me into that podcast, the episode you did with him. Yeah? Now I love his podcast. I've been going back. Yeah, Kreischer. It, he he's has so he, knowledge. endearing. Yeah. I got to get him back on the show. He's so smart, but he's so down to earth. But yeah. like, he like pretends he's not smart, but then you hear him say things, and that's weird. Yeah, I got to get him back on the show. Self-effacing. I like it. Mm. Hey, Happy Valentine's Day to my Cupid, my Valentine. I'll tell, I'll tell Julie you said hi on Valentine's. I'm going to tell Julie that you picked Jeff Bezos over Zuckerberg for a threesome. That's who she would pick. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah. bald guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> Have a good day. Uh, and hope you enjoyed Kitchen Dwellers. Um, maybe next week is Steve-O and Wee Man, or maybe next week is Shovels and Rope, whoever I get first. Hell All right, yeah. guys. Be safe out there, and uh, we'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. That was a fun one.